show me. Welcome to the theatre at Park Road Post. This is our post-production facility in Wellington, and this is where we're spending a huge amount of time at the moment, just working on getting The Hobbit finished. It's due to be completed literally two days before the premiere, hopefully. <laughs> so we'll give you a look at where we're at with post-production. You're gonna see a lot of sleep-deprived people in this blog. Everyone's working around the clock to get the film finished. So everything begins at editorial. So here's the bunker, editorial. I am Dan Best. I'm the first assistant editor on The Hobbit. So next door to us is the cutting room. Jabers and Peter are in there busy cutting film two at the moment. Ah! We were shooting this with 150 people on the set. And then here we are sitting here and it just comes down to Jabers and I, two of us. <laughs> the last two men standing. Uh, get to edit the movie. So it's quite a relaxing and enjoyable process. And while you're putting that together, I'm going to ma make another cup of tea. When Jabez has something very simple to do <laughs> that doesn't need me around, I get the cups and go make a cup of tea. And come back and it's all done. Very good. Hey, welcome to Preppers. Come on in. Christian's just down this way. We're sort of the front-end creative team that Pete uses to design a lot of his shots. We are animating the camera and the characters around to form what's kind of like 3D storyboards, almost at a video game level. Typically you do your previs before your shoot. Obviously they finish principal photography and we're still prevising a few shots. We've just got a, a shot turned over from Peter. This is what we get from editorial sometimes. Basically we get a, a blank card that says something like CG wide shot, goblins slowly move torture machines towards the great goblins platform. And we've got to turn this stuff around pretty quickly. There's Christian over here at uh, Previs. We just got a shot turned over that we need some torture machines. Cheers, thanks. Yeah, usually they're pretty quick. Here we go. We have from Weta Workshop some torture machine designs. We need to get these modeled pretty quick, guys. Um, that will be a minute or two. Yeah, a minute. Jerry, what are you doing? I'm making a 3D extravaganza. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be a good shot if it didn't have sound effects, though. Uh, the model's coming through yet? Yep, here it is. Jerry, can we get textures on that? Oh yeah, sure, no problem. Already on it. Already on it? Awesome. Almost done. So the thing is, you know, I've got to turn the stuff around pretty quickly, because, you know, the film delivers in like eight weeks. What do you do, Eric? Uh, I just stare at code all day. So Iggy, uh, yeah. you got your torture machines, how's the shotgun? Yeah, sorry it took so long, but uh, I think this is going to work. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, it looks pretty good. We should, we should send it to Pete and see what he says. Cool. It'll be a really cool, cool moment. Okay. That's good, Dave. Yeah. We just got PJ notes. We're off to um, talk to a few of the supervisors about what we have to do now on a few extra shots. This is the original building that we had on Lord of the Rings. For Hobbit, now we've expanded to eight different buildings. It used to be an insane asylum, right? Yes, this used to be an insane asylum, and still, days like this, it feels like it even so. We're at the six and a half week mark. Um, not much time left to finish this one. We're at Wexford Road now. This is the original production office for Lord of the Rings, but now it's the home of all the animators for Hobbit. So the troll sequence, definitely one of the biggest animation challenges in speaking, which is something new for trolls. Are there any more of you little fellas hiding where you shouldn't? No. In rings they're always only ever kind of grunting. <laughs> Peter shot at live action on the mocap stage. Are there any more of you little fellas hiding where you shouldn't? Pete liked the action but wanted to go a little bit bigger on what the stunt guys were doing. So maybe we do a custom mocap shoot for just those bits. That felt good. I'm happy with that. Okay, should we move on? We've advanced the art of motion capture quite substantially on The Hobbit, um, including the detail of motion capturing individual hairs of dwarf beards. Right. Come, Come on, on in. Hey Welcome to the Welcome. Department of Internal Beard Hairs. We're going to tell you a little bit about what we do here. Uh, Kev, can we get you to paint, please? Having beards on set is rather dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. We've lost a lot of good beards. That's right. So we've created a virtual beard in the computer. And what that doesn't allow us to do... Whoa, layman's terms, please. Sorry, sorry. We, um, we have a beard in the computer. Oh, Motivation the, uh, here. It's dark. It's stormy. Device. Okay. You're in yeah. the mountains. Action. Wind. Rain. <laughs> Lightning bolts! <laughs> and cut! So, so this, this looks great, can we go ahead and uh, propagate this? Right, so what I can do is just by pushing this one button here, 
and voila, you can see that the beard has now been propagated throughout the film. It's the power of beard capture technology. Nice work, guys. Great job, everybody. Good. Really good. I don't think there's anybody working harder at the moment probably than the Weta Digital artists who have got several hundred CGI shots to do in the last few weeks of post-production. We have a lot of shots to deliver each week. In fact, the most shots Weta has really ever delivered. Good luck. Let's break the record. Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Saturday at Wexford Road. The first thing we have to do each morning is uh, release the animators. So, should we do that? Are we ready? Are they there? Wake up! Wakey, wakey! Come on, sleep is for the week! Sleep is for the week! <laughs> Don't even bother getting dressed. If people don't have to leave, we're happy for them to stay. We have people that give massages here. We actually do laundry for people. They get three meals. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> Yum. Conceptual artists eat when they can. A concept artist's work is never done. Especially on a big effects movie like this. We're still conceptualizing after having been here for three years. As long as there's still a shop that has an empty spot, whether it's green or whether it needs something in front, or you just, you just keep at it. And we're painfully conscious that behind us are considerable teams of people waiting for artwork to do the 3D and the texturing and the lighting and the animation. The big house where we're going now is where we've put in the Goblin team. That's the Goblin Mobile right there, Chris White's vehicle. It's exactly the same car my grandmother has. <laughs> <laughs> it was apparently a reform school. Supposedly people tell me that they see ghosts in here and that there's uh, claw marks down in the basement. So come in if you dare. So what Peter was looking for was to create this, this whole world underground. So we're creating this goblin town with all these different structures and lights and walkways and fires. And so this is some of the work in progress. A lot of what we're doing on this guy is beauty lighting because we got to really highlight all of his warts and all that good stuff. He's quite hideous, but he has to look beautiful at the same time. Here at Park Road Post Production, just down the corridor, we've got Andrew Lesney, our DP, doing the color timing of the film. Hi, welcome to the DI. Um, yesterday we made chicken laksa, and today we're going to cook up a pad thai. DI is short for digital intermediate. This is part of a process which is called the color grading. It is like Photoshop for motion pictures. This is the exterior of Bag End. We filmed this shot in Matamata. We didn't have the most ideal weather on the day, but the landscape is still very beautiful, so we actually are just working the original material on this one. Essentially what we do is we start with uh, the raw plate, and then we're building up basically a layered grade, and the result is what you see there. We also have these dueling lasers that we can do this. This, this bit of grass bit? right there. That yeah. bit. Distinct from this bit this over bit here. here. <laughs> We've got these lights up for the blog, but traditionally we work in a much darker environment. And um, uh, we actually work in an environment that's, in fact, even darker than this, but mimics a cinema. <laughs> Uh, hi, uh, you're at Park Road Post, and uh, this is where we're doing the sound for The Hobbit. Uh, let's go and have a look. We start the day with a dance. That's the first thing we do in sound. And we hand it on. Chris, take the floor. We yeah. did a fader dance. Fader dance, yeah. You can see Dave's cut 16 layers of sounds for this goblin. <laughs> And he's done such a cool job that see what else I can do to it, which is fun and challenging. I think a lot of people don't understand about how a film gets made and that how many people it actually takes to piece a soundtrack together. <coughs> we have dialogue, Elves. we have music, and in sound effects alone, we break into several categories. Standard sound effects, swords, body falls, doors, things like that. We have ambiences, which is like some wind. We have some crowd sounds, things like that. What we're doing here today is just put out little friends and family and all the other departments call to come down and be panicked villagers for Dale for when it gets desolated by smog. That's how we rock it in Soundpost here. 
And here, Matt's cutting the crowds and uh, all that sort of stuff. <sighs> Run away. Feels like a scene from The Shining down this hallway. I really wish I had a tricycle. Foley. Oh, we've got the best sounding door. Foley's a specific part of the soundtrack which relates to humans. Anything associated with what they touch and how they move is recorded by these guys. Get the bash stuff, break stuff. Drag it, stretch it, bend it. What makes a great Foley track is often the interpretation of the sound rather than the literal sound itself. Goblin claws. It's just banjo picks. It makes it very awkward when you go to the toilet in the middle too. <laughs> Welcome to Abbey Road, Studio One. This is the place where we make all these fabulous soundtracks, including The Hobbit, and that's what we're doing today. We're back in the studio for a record day. Full orchestra today. There'll be 93 people in their various sections. This is Howard's conductor's podium. So this is where he stands and directs the orchestra from. Abbey Road is legendary with its microphone collection. So here's one that John Lennon sang into when he was a recording artist at the studio. I've never had a shot with one here. So look, can you get that? The musicians will see the music for the first time. They don't rehearse it or anything like that. They just turn up, the sheet music is in front of them, and they play. This is rather important to make sure these get onto the podium. Here's the control room. It's a real adrenaline rush to be looking out at the orchestra that we're kind of in control of this fabulous sound. Let's take a break. Theatre 2. This is the final mix room. This is where it all comes together. Well, look who it is. We all arrive with tons and tons of sounds. Then in the final mix, we have to figure out what sound makes sense and what sound doesn't. You could put a horse vocal oh. on the shot to let us know we're it's there. <laughs> But at the end of the day, hopefully we've got clarity and we are telling the story. And I have to say, it's really fun. Got another three weeks and then, um, and another couple films. <laughs> so the journey's long from over, it's just really starting. So that's what's happening at the moment. The premiere is very, very close. But fortunately, people are staying calm. <laughs> They're staying incredibly disciplined, focusing on their work. We are blessed to have such a sane, sensible team. So there we have it. Gives you a taste of where we are at the moment, but we will catch up with you very, very soon and invite you to come along and have a look at our experience at the premieres.